Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chelsea. If you're new here, if you're not new, welcome back. I appreciate you coming back. Happy 2022. I keep saying 2021. I really like, I don't know what year it is, what day it is. It is Monday though. I have that like big on my phone because I never know what day it is. However, hi, how are ya? Subscribe, like, comment, all those things if you have not already. My Instagram, all my socials, my podcast, all of the things, my merch are linked down below. I know I just cringed that I said all of the things. That is a MLM or a thing to say. However, I feel like garbage. Can you tell? I think it's pretty obvious. I'm also like missing skin from my forehead. How does that happen? I don't know. I don't know. Oh my God, I do know. I burnt my forehead. <laughs> I just remembered. Great. Now it's not a mystery anymore. Thanks for really going through that with me. Anyways, yeah, I feel like garbage. I don't really need to explain why or for how long. I don't know. I filmed this intro part of the video three times now and I like go, I just keep talking and I just really want myself to shut up. <laughs> Anyways, I took off the last like four or five days and I I need to post and I can't take off that much work, even though I do work for myself. That's the issue is that I work for myself and I don't have PTO. So I need, I need to I need to work. So here we are. Today, we're going to be reacting to a video that I wanted to react to like a month ago, but I just forgot. <laughs> Today, we're gonna to be reacting to the CEO of iGenius calling me a bully. A few little quick things before we get into it. This is very important. Everyone in this video has posted this information, this footage publicly, not only to YouTube, to Instagram, they are public figures, they present themselves as such. Therefore, according to YouTube's privacy guidelines and policies, I am not in violation of that. They are not private citizens. I am not doxing them. I am I'm not doing anything like that. I am purely providing my commentary on this situation and reacting to it. Do you want to know why I have to say that? and why I have that disclaimer in my title card in the intro of this video, and then also in my description box all over my channel. Do you want to know why I'm so redundant with that? Because that is the only way MLMers think that they can get our videos taken down. Do you want to know what MLM, what type of network marketer is the most guilty of that? The iGenius people, the WFAB people, they reported and mass reported, not all of them, I don't know how many people, but I received it on the back end. They they reported every single iGenius video I made, which was what, two of them, three of them? It was, yeah, it was only like two of them. Yeah, because I did part one and part two. They reported those videos so much. And thankfully, with YouTube, with their legal team, they send you, they send you over an email and say, you know, hey, we're going to review this, but just so you know, blah, blah, whatever. They give you time to blur out faces and stuff if needed. However, these people are public figures. I don't have, the, the privacy policy does not, it doesn't apply to them. But I haven't stopped talking about iGenius because of that. I saw some, I think it was on Reddit. Yeah, it was on Reddit where someone was like, oh, did they get like a, they meaning me and Isabella, did they get a cease and desist? No. And they can try to do that, but that's not, what are you going to sue me for? Giving my opinion? This is a free country. A little background, if you're not aware, I'll have my videos linked down below and Amal's and Isabella's and a few other ones that I like too. Amal did really good videos on this. Obviously, Isabella did too, but Amal has been talking about this MLM and these, this different breed of MLM scammer for like over a year before really any of us were talking about it. So definitely subscribe to her. Go watch her channel. I'm sure she would appreciate it and I would appreciate that as well because she is amazing. Quick little background if you're not aware. Of course, go watch those videos, but WFAB, which stands for Work From Anywhere Boss Builders, Not Boss Babes, was a team on Monate, on Monate in Monate, that was primarily in the exotic Taranto, Canada. However, they moved over from Monate to iGenius. iGenius is a financial education, trading stocks, cryptocurrency, Forex, things like that type of MLM where they sell access to like educational platforms and tools. It's all about recruiting. It's complete BS <laughs> and disgusting. That company has changed its name three times. They've been sued multiple times. The FTC, the SEC, all of that just really does not like them, in my opinion, and for what I've seen. Yeah, so the video we're watching today is that CEO calling me a bully and just really not making any sense. So let's go ahead and watch that. Sorry that intro was so long, but you know, that's what happened. And so this video is called Setting the Record Straight, WFABB and the CEO of iGenius. Um, and I'm so excited to, you know, come on here and share um, more credible information about this company. There has been a lot of things up in the air that has been said that has been false. 
And we just want to come on here and clarify. And I was just trying to figure out how um, I could come on here and address and make a video. But then I thought, you know what? Why don't we bring somebody? What are those lashes? Her eyebrows look great. But what are those lashes? Also, a few of y'all, and I say a few, a lot of y'all have been like screenshotting or like sending me her pictures and stuff that Jasmine keeps wearing like headbands and having like obnoxious clips on the side of her head and stuff. In the part two video, the like Zoom call, or maybe it was the first one, I can't remember. She had, <laughs> she had, she had this hair that kept sticking out literally like this the whole time obviously she has dark hair so it was more noticeable but it was like this and it was so it wasn't just a fly away it was full it was it was hilarious and I kept saying like oh it's that Monate magic but y'all keep sending me videos of her and pictures that she says like I don't know why I think it's so funny. It's just like one giant barrette. <laughs> like for dear life, she's trying to hold down that one hair. And clearly she's trying to do that now in this too. But what the hell are these lashes? What is going on? They look like, like they look like horns. Like she's got horns on her face. That's crazy. Don't be canceling me for talking about someone's lashes. Jesus Christ. Uh, this company, iGenius and the facts be behind iGenius. So um, I'm bringing up Chad. He is the president of this company, and I want him to come on here and just share everything, um, all the all the credibility, all the facts about this company, so that you guys can get the proper information coming from us. Jasmine, thanks a bunch for inviting me. Uh, you know, when you reached out and you kind of just told me what was going on and um, had the idea maybe to just do a quick little Zoom, I thought that was an awesome idea because. Yeah, I've uh, I've been a couple of people have told me about some of these videos and things that are that are flying around out there and and yeah, a lot of misinformation, right? And I'm not gonna lie, he kind of cute. He kind of cute. He might be extremely unethical and a douche, but he kind of cute. All right. It's not like we're uh, upset or frustrated by it. We just want to make sure that the truth is out there and just kind of set the record straight. Um, and so, you know, before I jump into it, uh, you know, if it's okay, Jasmine, I'll just kind of explain who we are. Like, what, what is iGenius? iGenius is, you know, technically, and in the way we're registered, we're a publisher of financial education and research, right? But our platform goes a little bit beyond that, you know, beyond just like, you know, providing people access to videos and tools and, and you know, different live education and stuff. We also have this kind of uh, ecosystem of strategic partnerships and you know we, we uh partner with companies we, we leverage an ecosystem of strategic partnerships you're not a frog it's not an ecosystem can you just speak english please maybe i've been reading the book cultish for too long i don't know do y'all do this i had someone message me they're like bitch you're still reading this book because i posted pictures that i was reading cultish in what was it Ju yeah july end of july when i was on my family vacation at the beach i am currently reading all of those books cultish ponzi nomics and then my three stephen hassan books like help get, getting people out of cults essentially he's so amazing that's i swear to god that's one of the only people i will fan girl for is stephen dr stephen hassan which i realized i've been saying his name wrong like this entire time anyways he's amazing but what i do is like depending on like how i feel i'll pick up like a different book and i'll just you know read i'm i don't know i'm weird i think i get that from my dad not being fucking weird he is fucking weird too <laughs> as is my mom. But I think I get that from him because he's definitely the type of person who reads like five books at a time. So weird. Anyways, sorry, tangent. Are y'all like that? However, what I was saying is that the cultish book, maybe I've just been, you know, listening to <laughs> listening to too much podcasts that the, uh, that the author has been on. I just started listening to her podcast as well. I just listened to her on Roberta Blevins podcast, Life After MLM. If y'all haven't listened to Roberta's podcast, Roberta is the queen of anti-MLM everything. Y'all, some y'all, you you know, call me the queen. No, no, no. She is the queen. She's so supportive. She's such a great human, you know, getting more into the language of MLMs and really focusing on that. But you'll notice in this video that he says so much as always, without really saying a lot, without really debunking a lot of things. There's a lot of thought stopping language in this as well. And that's something I want to talk about too during this video. Really more information about like the language of manipulation within MLMs. That book is a great resource. I also did a really great video with Marco. His channel is always Marco. We did a video where we were actually reacting to Dramus, one of the top 
people in WFAB, which is now part of iGenius. And then also Marco did an amazing video with MLM expert Robert Fitzpatrick. I'll have that link down below too. You can just go to his channel and watch it. Marco's channel is always linked down below. To go to different third-party companies that really would make sense for our members to, to, you know, to utilize or whatever. And we, uh, you know, we negotiate perks or benefits for them. Uh, even though they're not companies that we own or anything else like that, they're just partnerships. And so beyond the financial education component of, of what we do, we offer a whole bunch of different uh, perks and benefits to third party platforms and products. And then as a result, you know, we, we have this, what we really consider a, a really cool platform that can help people, you know, get their finances in order, uh, you know, live better lives, but by doing all that. And so, yeah, that that's kind of what we are in, in a nutshell. One of the things that's really important to, to stress, you know, as I as I watched a couple of these videos and stuff like that, um, you know, I think that there's at times a little bit of a, of a misconception that we're trying to claim that somehow we found the magic bullet that people can basically, you know, pay for one of our memberships and they're going to get rich, right? And that's absolutely just just not what we're teaching. It's not what we're all about. In fact, you know, we teach people that in order to, you know, get yourself financially fit or, you know, to really get your finances in order, it takes, you know, a long time, years and years. You might want to talk to your distributors then or your partners because they be saying something different. <laughs> They're saying something different. They're saying that they don't have to have the time to learn how to trade, how to do any of that. You just put it in there and leave it. So you should probably... Talk to them, buddy. But really, financial freedom is something that takes you know, like decades to create, right? Um, and, and so, anyway, the point is, is we are believers that the education that we provide can help somebody get their finances in order. It can help somebody, you know, make better decisions with their money. Sir, you need to talk to your distributors. They're always talking about financial freedom. At least he just, I mean, listen, I might not like the guy, but at least he just said like, yeah, financial freedom takes typically a long time to actually build and, and do. Meanwhile, you have reps and iGenius being like, we're breaking generational curses and we're making, you know, not only financial freedom, but generational wealth. Are you like, do you actually know what that is? Do you actually have that? What are you doing? Uh, you know, they get they get access to uh, with our company, we think are just additional benefits that continue to add value to our membership. So look, let's jump right into it. The, the, one of the things that um, I want to address head on that I've seen in some of these videos that I've heard kind of floating around is that, you know, we were, we were legally forced change our name because we had like scammed people out of money and, and something had happened that, that the government like said like, oh, you better change your name or we had to do it to like hide behind something. So let's be really clear. All right. So the, the company has been around for, you know, like over six years. Um, you know, we have we have reinvented ourselves a couple of times, uh, you know, like four or five years ago, the company was called um, Wealth Generators. Right. And, you know, in an, in an effort to improve the, you know, the branding and, and really kind of uh, create new excitement. And ultimately, you know, that that name was uh, just not a really good name, to be honest with you. The company changed the name to Kuvera. And that was a branding change. That was that was just a, basically a, a brand name change. Um, and then uh, in January of this year, the company changed from Kuvera to iGenius. But there was two really big differences between those changes. The WG change, the wealth generators change to Kuvera, was more of like just branding. It was more just like, hey, let's we, we've got a new story. We want, we want to tell people. But um, much of the you know the decision makers and stuff like that were the same. The change from Kuvera to iGenius was basically a completely new company launch, right? So we, uh, the only thing that stayed the same was the, the company's tax ID number, but there was new people making decisions. You know, the old, the old decision makers had, had made quite a few, you know, like decisions that, that weren't good, you know, just speaking really openly. Um, so, so new people were in charge, uh, you know, new software, new products, a new compensation structure. Uh, and so it was, it, was a, it was a new company and that's why the, the name was changed. Uh, you know, companies change all the time when there's really big changes happening. You know, they just announced recently that that Square is now going to be Block, right? That's, um, you know, th those are those are big things. I mean, uh, Google, you guys, uh, is Alphabet, Facebook was, you know, changed their name to Meta, or you know, that's going to be powered by Meta, whatever it may be. So that happens, right? It, it's just something that happens. Um, but just make it really clear that the company that we launched in January is not the company that you know, Jasmine. I know you were a part of, you know, several years back. It's not the same company. We literally started in January as far as on this journey with the, the people that are making the decisions with the products that we are offering completely fresh start and it was a new company that was birthed in January of 2021. Now 
uh, as a part of that, you know, where people are saying, well, they had to change their name, they were forced to change their name, they always cite that there was a CFTC fine that was paid by the company. Look, we don't hide behind that. It's in our public filings. Uh, you know, so basically the CFTC, which is one of the regulatory bodies in the U.S., they came in, they asked us to provide them every detail about our business. They, they basically looked upside down, inside out, the entire company, inside out, and they basically said that hey, one of our products that we were offering, they, they felt like it was not in line. It was, it was uh, deemed as, you know, that we weren't licensed to be offering it. It was a Forex software product that we had, we had a contract with a company to create. It plugged in and connected to people's uh, trade accounts. And they said that it was, uh, you know, that we shouldn't be offering it. So we discontinued it. Uh, we paid the fine. And uh, that's that, right? They didn't shut our company down. They didn't send us like a cease and desist. They literally just evaluated our company. I may be wrong, but <laughs> the CFTC or the FTC it doesn't send cease and desists. I believe they'd send warning letters, which essentially, I mean, if you think about it, that's kind of the same thing, right? Essentially a warning letter. So, okay, I don't want to nitpick every single thing he says. I don't want to have, you know, bitch eating crackers syndrome, which I'm sure y'all have heard me say that before. I'm going to give credit where credit's due. I'm not just going to be a dick to be a dick, right? I'm not going to be like, look at that bitch over there eating crackers like she owns the place. I think it's very telling that, you know, he's going over all this. I do like that at least he just admitted to that. Technically, there is a difference between a rebranding and a and a relaunch. We'll say, I do believe that that's what the first one was, you know, Wealth Generators, which is a horrible name, to Kuvera, which is still a pretty bad name. Then all of these issues happening, and then you conveniently clean house, as he said, start a whole new company, which if the tax ID numbers stay the same, you're not starting a whole new company rebranding and relaunching, essentially. Very interesting how he is giving off that, you know, he's, he is very well spoken. He is coming off as very professional. And I appreciate that, you know, he's not like these Huns that are on here who are going all over, <laughs> just acting a damn fool. Okay, I can appreciate that. I still think that there is some deception behind this. And you know, being like, Oh, we're not hiding from this, we're not doing that. Oh, you notice how he said, Oh, Jasmine, you were a you were a member of Wealth Generators, you know, back when it was a completely different company. It's still an MLM. It's still the same. You just have different partnerships or different products that you're selling or that not even that you're selling that these people who are signing up have access to. It's very annoying. I know that was one of the main things that a lot of people said when she was a part of it of years and years ago that her, I I don't think it's her upline. I think it's her upline's upline. R Rakan, Rakan, allegedly scammed a bunch of people and like her entire team and downline. And then she moved over to, to Monate. So it's just very interesting. I think it's funny that he's mentioning that. I mean, hey, he's a good salesperson and that's that. The FTC, you know, all these regulatory bodies, you know, from time to time, they, they take a look at what a company is doing, especially when a company, you know, starts to do, you know, good things. Uh, and so, you know, we have had other inquiries where they looked at our business and they were completely satisfied. You know, when a company's doing really well, these regulatory, you know, organizations, they, uh, they check into people. I mean, yeah, sure, when you get on their radar, but I wouldn't say that the red flag for them is that you're doing well. I would say it's that they're probably getting a good amount of complaints about you. With our, our business practices. So... Those are just two things I want to address. Okay, let's go into another one, right? Um, one of the YouTuber, YouTubers that I saw uh, basically said that um, people would be much better off joining a startup than iGenius, which I thought was just kind of interesting. Again, everybody has their own opinion. I'm not here to <laughs> say they aren't, but we are essentially a startup. I mean, we, we pre-launched in January was, was technically the way that we positioned it. Uh, we had a, still a couple of things with our products and our platform that we were kind of finalizing. And then we kind of fully launched in June of this year. So, uh, you know, in all for all intents and purposes, this this is a startup. I guess the only difference is, is that we are backed by a publicly traded company called InvestView, which is actually a, a strength. It's, it's a good thing, um, which means we are, you know, we're, we're backed by a, a, a stable, secure company. You know, InvestView has uh, other companies that they own or that, that are a part of their umbrella. Uh, one is you know one of the largest bitcoin mining operations in the country um and they have you know like a broker dealer they have other stuff so yeah we are we are one of their subsidiaries um but 
we're essentially a startup, right? January is when we got things really going. I don't think, that, and I don't know who he's talking about, but I don't think that anyone said, oh, you should just join a startup. I think what they were meaning is that you should just start up your own business. Shit, maybe he is talking about me to where I said, I don't know why they didn't just join an MLM that was just starting like a brand new one. Oh my God, maybe he is talking about me because I did say that. Then he's just misquoting like what I said and made it sound a lot weirder. I did make that point. And they aren't a new MLM. These people that were with QVera or Wealth Generators, some of them are still in iGenius. So you just had a relaunch. You're not a brand new MLM. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That was me playing devil's advocate and being like, if you're going to be a good scammer, go do this. Like it wasn't, oh God, I can't. I heard this and I thought this was interesting. You know, one of the videos was basically saying, look, anyone can go buy crypto. You don't need iGenius to buy crypto or to buy Bitcoin. Well, of course, everybody can go out and buy crypto. That is that is obvious. Um, and it's not about purchasing Bitcoin. That's not what we are doing. We're trying to teach people. And, and what we are doing is helping people learn the best ways to get their money working for them, right? So we're helping people get educated about the blockchain and about blockchain projects and about the different coins and currencies that are, that are in the space. Um, you absolutely can get a lot of the same information, you know, ask questions to market experts, people that are studying it, people that are in it every single day. And so it's very interactive, it's very dynamic. Um, you know, it's, it, it, I like to compare it to like a gym membership, right? Um, you can go online and you can learn all of the same workout routines, I mean, from diet, nutrition, to technique, to how to have a good workout to get in shape, to, to be healthy. But guess what? Like millions of people, they still pay for a trainer or millions of people, they still pay to go to a class, like a fitness class, uh, even though they could go get that all for free. Well, why? Because they get a support system. They get access to ask questions and have somebody kind of help them out. And that's exactly what our platform is. Of course, there's a lot of free information out there. And of course, you don't need iGenius to, uh, you know, to buy Bitcoin. But what we are providing is so much more. But the only way you are actively making money in the MLM is by recruiting people into it. You are losing money otherwise. Is that he's saying, well, of course, well, you can go to the gym. And it's one of those, one of those, you know, canned responses they have of we can go to the gym, but you know, people still pay for fitness classes. That That's not the same thing. That's comparing apples to scented markers. Like it's not the same thing at all. Yeah. I can learn about all of this, but who are the professionals? Who are the experts? Are they just other people that are in the MLM. Like you're actively losing money in this MLM. If you're not recruiting people, you're actively losing money. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Let's say I don't recruit anyone. I'm putting money into the MLM. So much fucking money, so much money. And I'm learning how to invest. Let's say I spend easy figures here, $200 a month on the MLM, along with a $400 startup fee. So that's $2,600 just spent on my like subscription cost when I could just open up a Coinbase account and learn from actual experts and buy $2,600 worth of crypto and, and that's it, then I'm done. <laughs> then like, it, then I'm good. So it's just very interesting that, that that they're saying all this stuff. Like, what do you, it's so crazy. Like that they, they don't get it. They don't get the point. And then they're arguing, not the point that I was making or that any of us are making. They're having a completely different conversation. It's not a difference of opinion. It's a difference of reality. They're having a completely different conversation. We're not even in the same room or planet. You know, telling people to buy Bitcoin, you know, it's it's at, it's access to market experts. Um, and in addition to that, you know, and what iGenius, like I said in the beginning, we also have these third party strategic partnerships where people are getting access to, you know, crypto platforms that they wouldn't maybe get access to otherwise, or they're getting like perks and benefits. Like, for example, we have a partnership with a company called CoinZoom. CoinZoom is, you know, it's a crypto exchange. And our members, we negotiated with CoinZoom that our members get like a, a higher up card level and they can get their card shipped for free, like small little perks, right? But those perks, they kind of stack up when we have we have many of them. Or one of them is, you know, we, we have a partnership with a company called Endotech, right? And um, Endotech, they're normally set up to really help institutions or like high net worth individuals. But our members, you know, we have a little link in our back office that, you know, people can click on. And if they go over to Endotech, if one of our members does, they create an account, they're able to do it uh, and, and connect the Endotech software to their crypto 
account uh, with like a much smaller account minimum, right? So that, that's again, the perk and the benefit. And the cool thing is, and this is an important thing to point out, that again, we are, uh, we, we create education. So like when our members click on that link and go over to Endotech, we don't get paid. Um, I mean, the reason I bring this up is because, uh, you know, in one of the articles out there, you know, there was this whole big thing made about like, well, we aren't reporting our, you know, our revenue from Endotech. We aren't, pro we aren't reporting the assets under management that we are managing at Endotech. And it's like, well, of course we're not because number one, we don't even get a, a finder's fee. We, we, we negotiated uh, a deal where we pushed all the benefit for our users. We didn't even, we, the, the company doesn't get the kickback or any sort of thing. We just basically have a link there and an agreement in place that allows our members to get, you know, uh, uh, their account. An easy way to think about this, if you've ever worked for a corporate company, a lot of times they'll have corporate discounts. So for instance, a certain percent off for like tickets and stuff at places that that one website, I can't remember what it's called. If you know what it is, something tickets, tickets live, I can't fucking remember, but a lot of corporate companies have or give access to that. And you can get like Bush Gardens or stuff like that for like 10%, 15% off movie tickets, literally tickets to anything, it's crazy. A lot of corporate companies have discounts for Verizon, any internet service provider, like a lot of places like that, gym membership discounts, stuff that like helped your life overall, which is really good. But corporate company doesn't get like a kickback for that. It's basically signing up for a corporate discount where whoever, whatever company or service provider, offers it helps the company the, like this the provider and essentially like they know like oh, okay great you're going to tell your employees to come to us cool all right we'll give you a mass discount if they show whatever or any proof something like that so yeah i understand what he's saying but then also i, I feel like they essentially do have access to a certain amount of like data rather like I feel like they should kind of report data of profits rather like okay well you're if you're offering this perk or this system or this give it access to like a certain amount of money or a certain amount of crypto or something and it sets up like rules for you I guess or like it buys or trades or but like not without your permission I don't know so that it like does it for you and you just don't even have to do anything and that's one thing that the W Fab girls have really been pushing which like I do that within my within my fidelity account like my fidelity investment account I have rules set up to like okay if Disney goes below this like sell half of my shares so that I'm at least not missing out on like a whole bunch of money. But then also I don't want to sell all of them because I still want to have like a little bit. Also, again, disclaimer, do not trade more than you are okay with losing. I, I have the rule of like double that. If I invest $5, I have to be okay with losing $10. If I invest 500, I have to be okay with losing a thousand, right? So it's just, that's my mindset. So so I agree, but then don't agree with what he's saying. Like it's still sketchy. People out of SU that they do things the right way. I just, I, I almost found that one like humorous that like the point was being made that somehow we're, we're like, you know, um, we've pulled the wool over the eyes of the SEC and we have all this revenue that we're not, we're not reporting from, from uh, Endotech. Well, like Endotech's a partnership. They're a third party company. And so that, that's one more Jasmine. Sorry, I'm going on. I've, got, I've made some notes. So I'm just kind of like plowing through a few of these just real quick. Um, so one of the things that I think is really interesting is in a lot of these videos, iGenius gets called a Ponzi scheme, right? They call it like a Ponzi, which which is really laughable, first of all, because it would be really interesting that if we are really a Ponzi scheme um, that is owned by a publicly traded company that is reporting to the SEC, that is filing, you know, public filings, 10 Qs, 10 Ks, all that stuff with the uh, United States regulatory agencies involved, that they uh, that they would just be totally cool with that, right? Well, yeah, there's this other, you know, part of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's laughable. The point is we're not a Ponzi scheme uh, and there are Ponzi schemes out there. And so I understand why people quickly draw to that as the the quick, like, you know, they, they uh, stereotype or whatever it may be. Um, these Ponzi schemes, you know, they're creating their own, you know, crypto coins. They're, they're guaranteeing people like 5% a day with no work. I mean, they're, 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 they're crazy. Right. Um, and it's completely different than, than what we are doing. Uh, I mean, we're, like I said, we're, we're backed by a publicly traded company. Just because you are backed by a publicly traded company, just because you are a publicly traded company, doesn't mean you're not a pyramid scheme. You know what else is a public company or is about to be? Herbalife. Is Herbalife a publicly traded company yet? Avon, I knew that one. Herbalife, Party Lights, Take Shape for Life, traded as part of Medifast, which is 
Octavia, Primerica, New Skin. I knew about New Skin. Pampered Chef, Berkshire Hathaway. Okay, yeah. So, ugh, Usborne Books, Tupperware, Asana. Yeah, so there's, there's a, I don't want to say like there's so many, but there's a handful. There's a good amount of MLMs that are publicly traded just because you're a publicly traded company doesn't mean you're not sketchy. Make sure that we're compliant. Um, you know, and, and again, InvestU has uh, other companies outside of, of just iGenius that are, you know, w that are drawing attention from, from regulators. And, and so uh, anyway, it, it's um, it's very clear. We've worked really hard to make sure that we are doing things the right way. And, and again, I don't I'm not like upset or knocking the people that maybe like are, are saying that we're a Ponzi scheme. Um, I get it. If you hear about crypto MLM. You know, an MLM that is that is you know has products in the crypto space, then the immediate reaction is, well, it must be a Ponzi scheme. Well, the, the fact is, is um, it's just not the case. I mean, we are not our success is not tied to just like recruiting, uh, like a like a Ponzi scheme would be, right? It just all is paid off of the next person that comes in. Uh, we actually have a, a much many more uh, customers than we do distributors, or those people that are just using the products. We have more of those than those that are actually out there actively. Uh, you know, sharing the products or, or distributing those, those products. What you're saying is that you have people who haven't recruited anyone. The crazy thing is with these type of financial educational platform MLMs is that you can't really, you can't really have a customer. Think about it this way with Monate, with, it, with any other MLM. Let's say this is a Monate product, a distributor, I'm selling the product to a customer. The customer is just buying the product from me. They haven't signed up to be a, a distributor. They haven't signed up to, to do any of that. With these types of MLMs, it's not a, a tangible product. So when you're signing up, like the only way to be a customer is to sign up. So the only difference between someone who, oh, who is a distributor and who is a customer, the customer is just a distributor who hasn't recruited anyone yet. The, the, the number we are the most proud of is that we have really strong retention. In fact, our retention, uh, you know, revenue has grown every single month since we launched. Um, and in fact, it's outpaced even our enrollment uh, revenue, right? So in other words, you know, we are we are keeping people at a better rate than we're even bringing people onto the platform because they're, they're excited, they're happy with their products, they're happy with the services that's called the sunk cost fallacy my dude <laughs> like okay you're keeping people on I just think it's so funny that this is the same thing along the lines of the whole idea that like people in Monate say, oh, we're the, the fastest growing hair care company in the galaxy. Oh, God. This goes along the same lines as when people in Monate, and I know I keep relating it to Monate, but this was the company they came from and it's the one that I talk about the most. It's the one that is infesting Tampa and Florida in general. So I'm going to talk about it. Those people say like, oh, we're the fastest growing hair care company in the world. And it's like, you're an MLM, obviously. Join the company and they have to buy the products to stay active and to even join. So yeah, that's how you make your money. Then yes, you are going to be a fast growing company because the company's making money by people joining. That is how these people make money. If you all just stopped recruiting, you would all just dot making money essentially so that doesn't make any sense they're getting access to and they're, they're staying members um and, and they're really excited about it uh so you know bottom line is that we have you know we, we have a lot more customers than distributors we're not a ponzi um but i get it there are there, there's kind of just naturally some hate out there for uh you know network marketing companies so companies that you know use network marketing as their distribution method and so therefore i i get it i'm just trying to make sure everybody understands um, that there, that is not the case. All right. The one thing I do want to say is I've watched a couple of these videos and, and Jasmine, I know that you've been, you know, the, um, the, the, the person that's been attacked in a lot of these videos. And again, I know you're kind of like over it. It doesn't matter. People can say what they want to say. You, you weren't attacked. <laughs> There's a difference between being called out being held accountable and being attacked. Jasmine was not attacked. That little hair she had was attacked though. I can't say that he wasn't attacked. I don't know if he, w I don't know if he was, I can only speak for myself, obviously. But in my videos, I didn't attack him. All I said personally was that he is the the biggest Chad, right? I think I said something along the lines of like, of course his name's Chad. He looks like a douche. But I was taken back at like the bullying that that goes on um, on some of these videos, like, like really like, like lacking taste, lacking uh, tact in the way that they, they go about it. I mean, one of our employees at iGenius is named Christian Crabtree. Um, he's our director of sales, uh, you know, hardworking, just a, a good employee, great guy, right? Um, and one of the like YouTube people were like making fun of his car, like making fun of him as, as a person, which I'm just like, man, that, that 
I hope that speaks to the type of people that are, you know, kind of putting out this information. Um, I mean, who, who cares what somebody drives, right? I mean, whoever said that your success or the success of the company comes down to what the uh, what a guy who's an employee of the company drives. In fact, if we truly are a company that teaches people how to be financially educated, then um, you know, one of those things we would teach is that you know, cars are a depreciating asset and actually not a good investment. And so, if somebody's not driving a flashy car, that's actually probably uh, a sign that they're using the information that we provide. Cars are a depreciating asset. People always say like, oh yeah, boats are a money pit. It's a horrible investment. It's not an investment. It's a it's a liability, not an asset. And I agree, same way with cars. Like I don't think it's just not a great way to go. I mean, if you're gonna get something, get something that at least kind of hold its value well, like not a good, not a good asset, not a good thing to buy. If you want to, sure, if you can afford it, whatever. But the thing is, on the flip side of this, if you're trying to act like you live such a luxury life and oh my God, if you're selling that lifestyle, luxury and all this other shit and you're driving a beat up old Acura or like a, a shitty car in these people's minds, then yeah, that's something to point out because that's pretty condescending. However, there's a difference between selling like that lifestyle and like kind of like actually being financially literate and knowing what you're doing. Like I I probably am never going to buy a car ever again. I'm probably just going to keep leasing. I agree with him. But again, I think he's kind of twisting it and taking it out of context. Again, I don't know what he was referring to, but like, or what video he was referencing. I don't know. This, this is annoying. This is annoying because the way that he is, you know, being calm, cool, and collected, he has notes in front of him. He's very well-spoken. So it comes off as very trustworthy. You know, he's the CEO of the MLM. He's not recruiting anyone. Like, ugh. You know, I know that, Jasmine, there was some insults made to some of the people, like, on your team. Like, I saw, like, some pretty uh, just awful um, you know, uh, like making fun of one of the girls on your team, like the way she looks, the way she puts herself together. There was comments made. I mean, if her eyebrows weren't stamped on like that, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's talking about when uh, when I said that one of the Daniela's, it was makeup, calm down. Good God, I cannot wait for that. You really need to like not talk about people's appearances. I, I hope that that uh, speaks to kind of the type of people that were, were putting these videos out there. Um, I mean, the, the videos I watched, these people had done zero research on our company, right? There were there was personal attacks, there was these generalizations or these quick assumptions made, and yet they were claiming to be doing a comprehensive review or a deep dive of our company. I mean, to give you an example, in one of the videos, um, you know, the person was talking about one of our products, again, one of these third-party products that our, our members can get access to. We have a partnership with a company called Onero, uh, and people can, you know, they can purchase these, these packages of a cryptocurrency called Endow, right? And the, the, the YouTuber was like saying it as N-D-A-U, right? Well, if they had gone to our website or if they'd gone to the, the website of Endow, they would have like watched like a one minute video just to kind of understand what it is. And they would have learned that, oh, it's called Endow, not N-D-A-U, which actually it's a really cool product. Go check it out. They're, they're, a, they're a company that were created two years before iGenius. It wasn't a comprehensive review. It was just a quick overview. And sure, I'm, I can't remember if I put like deep dive in the title, but also who the fuck cares? All MLMs are the same. Crypto MLMs are typical, or investment MLMs are typically, let's not even say investment, let's say financial MLMs are typically always worse. Sir, what difference does it make? And he's talking about me. What difference does it make if I call Endow in DAU, doesn't make a fucking difference. It's still a shit coin. Your company is trash. This is not a good investment. And you are making a lot of money off of people recruiting and recruiting and recruiting and recruiting. It's a commercial cult and it is a pyramid scheme. That is all my own opinion that are backed by all the shit that I've seen. Like it's <laughs> me pronouncing something wrong doesn't mean anything. Half of these fucking Monate bitches <laughs> mispronounce the name Monate just because you make a comment about someone's physical appearance. Just because you, a, a general, not even a comment, a general observation. Just because Jasmine's got this stray hair that's going crazy. If you make a joke here or there, if you, any of this, it doesn't make what I'm saying any less, or anyone for that matter, any less credible or it doesn't make it, one little statement doesn't make all of it false. 
just like what he's doing here. So he's trying to essentially say like, oh, well, they're, you know, making jokes. They're roasting you. They're making fun of you. They didn't know how to pronounce this one thing. Like, oh, they did this, that, and this. But a few of the things that he's said are wrong. So does that make every little thing that he has said wrong? No, it doesn't. I can say one thing that is an opinion that might be harsh and then also say a fact before and a fact after or make a great point before and a great point after. It might not be a fact. It might just be my opinion. I'll go fuck myself, whatever. But it can be sandwiched and both those things can still be true and shit, the thing in the middle can be true or it can be wrong. Launched. Uh, we had no partnership with them prior to that. Um, and yeah, we think it's a really cool uh, uh, cryptocurrency. They have all sorts of utility. People, um, you know, it has like staking uh, rewards and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I, I digress. But the point is, um, these people know nothing about us. Uh, they, they didn't talk about actually all the, the additional things that people love and the reason why our retention continues to be so great and why we're growing and why people are, are super excited about our platform. You know, we have this, we have a discount travel engine people get access to. Again, one more perk, one more benefit. Why would I talk about the the positive things. I was talking about how the shit's a scam. What? I did actually say how it was weird that there was like a travel thing in there. Looking at what's like included in the different packages or like levels, whatever. When I was going over that, I he's right. I didn't know what half that shit meant. And I don't need to know. Needed to know the price to figure out how much you'd be paying a year, which is what I was focused on. So <laughs> now hearing what he's talking about, because this technically is a blind reaction. I mean, I watched a little bit of this. Now rewatching this, I'm like, oh my gosh. So all those like different little perks you get or what's included with that like sign up, setup fee, whatever. Those are like just your corporate discounts, it sounds like. Other than like your main platform and, and access to like certain, like your back office and stuff. It sounds like like a good amount of those things that are included in there with certain different tiers are like your corporate discounts. Like that's dumb, right? Uh, you know, there's access to these different third parties. Oh, one thing I wanted to bring up, I thought this was really interesting and it's worth noting and for people to understand one of the, the comments that was made was that, um, you know, we have this partnership with Endotech because I talked about this is this third party company. They are uh, they create artificial intelligence uh, crypto trading software. They're kind of making it sound like it's like your own like virtual broker kind of like think about it this way. You know, you have let's say I have again for numbers taken so I don't have to do hard math or math at all. Uh, let's say I have a, a hundred thousand in an investment account and I hire a broker, whoever the fuck to like manage that. Right. And or I put that in like a I don't know, a fucking hedge fund or something, all like financial terms. I don't know what half of them mean. I see now he's going to go after that. <laughs> They're going to be like, well, you don't know, bitch, you don't know. Endotech like manages money that you have in your crypto account or whatever or that you already have in there. Like it manages that for you kind of and it like trades it for you and seems dumb because again it just seems like you could set those rules yourself <laughs> or just watch it yourself like crypto exchange account and and the youtuber was like there is no such thing as artificial intelligence or any sort of like software that could ever you know uh, factor in all of the things that could impact a market <laughs> i'm like okay look um uh, of course not right but that's the whole idea of using like artificial intelligence is you know the, the software starts to be the one that makes the decisions and factors in like a hundred different things in order to execute the trades. You're not having a human, uh, you know, that's influenced, you know, heavily or, or you know is reacting to things. It, I mean, it's it, that's why you would use artificial intelligence. And the bottom line is, we have people all over the world that, that really like that product and they're using it and, and they're happy with it. But I, I thought that was a, a funny thing to point out that um, you know th that that could never happen or that there could never be. And again. Maybe the reason that uh, YouTuber took issue with that is that maybe they're thinking that we're claiming that that that's a you know a perfect strategy that everybody's winning, nobody's losing, everybody's millionaires within. It's not the case. It is really funny that he just said basically what I said in my video and what I just said now. He he's using protective language. However, the distributors aren't most of the time. Again, protective language most. They are not using the correct language. That safe language. And that's very dangerous, like very, very dangerous. There's these income claims, there's these promises, there's shit I could show you and it would take so long to go through, so I'm not going to, but the weekends really like, I think it was the next week, it was 
so I posted all these videos and then, yeah, right? Yeah, I came back from New York. Yeah, so it was Thanksgiving, all this shit happened. And then it was that weekend, I edited everything, I got out everything and then so did a bunch of other people too. And then, you know, that week I kind of just hung out and then went to New York. So yeah, so after, you know, between posting everything, you know, Thanksgiving-ish and then me going to New York and then this video coming out like that Friday of, <laughs> of me going up to Tony and I taking that little trip. But, and I'm sorry, I keep bringing up like, oh, I was in New York, I was in New York. It's not a weird flex. It's just like, that's the time timeline of like where my mind goes is like, oh, okay, this happened, blah, blah. It's just how I like keep track of things. It's obviously life events instead of like the date itself. I had started following like Jasmine's uplines and whoever Khalifa within minutes, minutes of me following them. I got DMs. I'm pretty sure, I mean, they were pretty like quick. So I'm pretty sure it was just someone that they have signed in to, or maybe a bot to like send out these automated messages. And they were making promises, income claims like, oh, I can teach you how to do this. And I can teach you how to make a thousand dollars within like five minutes. I'm not joking. It was wild. It was wild. And multiple people were doing that. And I was like, what the fudge? Like what? Those same people making all these claims that he says people don't do. They're in this MLM. So, sir, you're saying one thing as the CEO, and then these 1099 independent contractors that you have shilling all your stuff, who you're making money off of, are doing the exact opposite of what you're saying right now. So yeah, you might come off as professional, calm, cool, and collected, a little bit cute, but yet the people who are actually promoting it, recruiting people into it, showing this crazy lifestyle, like they, they are not doing the same thing. However, they aren't held accountable. However, the company that you own, that you're the president of, isn't being held accountable for the claims that they are making because they are not an actual employee of the company. So that, that strategy, that company, Endotech, they've had losing months. They've had multiple losing months. That it, it's, it's like any other uh, you know, trading strategy. There's wins, there's losses, but overall we have a lot of customers that are they're happy with their performance and you know we're, we're really excited about that. Anyway, the point of this video, and I'm, I'm going on, I've just got like a couple more things, but was just to kind of set the record straight. Um, if you don't want to join iGenius, don't join iGenius. Totally get it. Uh, and I understand, you know, the, the the hate towards MLMs has been around for a long time. It's not for everybody. Um, but, you know, like bullying videos that are literally like bullying and, and distasteful, just really, you know, going at people hard. Um, I think that speaks to the, the type of integrity that's being used with some of these things, right? And then just blatant lies, right? Where people are just not taking the time to, um, to really understand what we do. I mean, one of the claims is that people are, you know, they're taken advantage of, um, I, you know, members, they're, they're welcome to choose if they want to join the platform or not. And, um, and, and you know, one of the, the, the claims was the company doesn't care if people are, are losing money or winning. They don't care. They're just making their money off of membership. Well, well, I mean, of course we care if people are, are, are making money and they're, and they're being successful in their, you know, in this this journey of, of learning how to invest and how to participate in the markets. We're providing the education, the tools, and we take that really seriously. We, we you know, we contract with market experts and, and we, you know, if they're not providing good information and, and good education, then people are not going to have success in the markets and therefore people are not going to keep paying for their membership. And so, yeah, we care a lot about that. We care, we monitor the performance of, you know, the, the market experts that are providing, you know, trade ideas, which, which people get access to. And if those are not turning out to be good ideas. One thing that's funny is that he's saying, oh, of course we care, meaning like the company itself. Yeah, of course the fucking company cares if you're losing money because then you would stop, you would stop, you would cancel and they wouldn't have that retention rate and they would get a really bad rap. I understand that. I mean, they are, they do have a horrible reputation. However, if he is referring to me, pretty sure he is, I wasn't talking about him or the company. I was talking about the people who are recruiting you into it, the distributors, like I usually am. Yeah, they don't care if you are making money trading. They care if you are recruiting people. Because that's how you're actually going to make money in this MLM. They did uh, several uh, of those traders. So people aren't getting taken advantage of. Um, it is an opportunity. You know, people in, in most cases, they're doing it, you know, as a, as a side hustle, as a part time thing to, to create. People aren't being forced. You're manipulated. They're, they are making the choice to sign up. I've heard this a lot on TikTok as well. When people comment on my videos, because a lot of times, you know, I'll do like little response videos or I'll, you know, do a little like breaking news thing or I'll do like a miniature deep dive on there on TikTok kind of to tease a video that I've already done or a video that'll be coming 
coming out like that day or the next day or that weekend, whatever. One thing that I do get a lot other than like, you're so hateful or Ugh, shut the fuck up. One thing I get so often is like, it doesn't affect you. Get over it. Like no one's forcing these people to join. Yeah, I, n- I never said that they were organizations that are on the the cultish spectrum not to quote amanda montel again if you haven't read the book cultish please do it's amazing i'll have it i'll have all those books over there that are my favorite books linked down below all the ones i'm reading right now this idea of oh well no one's forcing them to no but they're being manipulated into it and that's really what undue influence is all about and I'm, i've been trying not to say brainwashed as much because again like amanda montel says once you say brainwashed you're able to kind of take away that emphasis empathy and kind of I don't want to say demean but really just be like oh well they were just brainwashed or oh you're brainwashed whatever like I don't really want to say brainwashing anymore I really want to start saying you know you've been subject to undue influence you know you've been manipulated if you um you know if you have more questions we're happy to address them go to our you know the the thing I always drive people back to though is go to investu.com and go to the public filings and you can literally see every detail about our business. You can look and see what the revenues were and, and, and what we pay in commission. You can see all of it. It's all there um, as, as a publicly traded company. So guys, I, I know that was a little bit longer than we, we had talked about, Jasmine. I apologize. I wanted to make sure that I uh, covered all the, the topics, but listen, I really appreciate all that you're doing. Again, I know that you've been, um, you know, the, the focus of some of these, these videos, like I said, some of us have been too. It's um, at the end of the day, it's whatever. People are gonna have their opinions but I wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to to set the record straight on a couple of those claims that were absolutely uh, false, they were lies, they're inaccurate. And and again, I I hope that for everyone's benefit that those that are, you know, kind of making those personal attacks, that bullying stuff, I I hope that stops. I think that, you know, we've seen that enough in our world that when people are, you know, making fun of people or, or being, you know, really hurtful, um, you know, you don't, you just don't know what somebody's dealing with. You don't know what they're going through from a personal standpoint. So, um, and I don't claim to be perfect. I'm sure I've, I've made mistakes, uh, in, in, you know, in my life as well too, but I would just encourage all of us inviting myself to, you know, maybe think a little bit more before we make, uh, you know, like a personal attack on somebody. Cause I just don't think that there's any room for that. Uh, if you don't like our company, if you don't like the idea of, of joining a company that, that teaches people what we do. If you think that it's not, then great. And you can have an opinion, make a video about it, but let's make sure that everybody understands where the uh, where the truth lies. Jasmine, sorry, I, I feel like I, I blabbed on, but I appreciate you having me on and um, let's do this again sometime. <laughs> so I think it is very smart of her that she went ahead and got the president. I don't know if he's also the CEO. I would assume, I would assume so. But I think it is very smart that she did get the head of the company to do a Zoom call with her and, you know, have that go out to the team and put that on YouTube. I mean, that was really smart of her. Not only does it show, you know, infor- I was about to say facts, uh, but information directly from the source, but it also shows that, you know, he he knows her by name. You know, he's, you know, looked into this too. And, you know, he's right there with you, fighting the good fight. And he's on your side and he cares about you and blah, blah, blah. From like a PR standpoint, that was really smart of her. However... <laughs> doesn't mean it wasn't manipulative. You know, if if I include you in my video, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm personally attacking you. I don't know you. If me mentioning someone in my video is a personal attack on them, and you don't want me to do that, okay, you want me to focus on the company, but again, the company isn't the one recruiting people. They're not doing that. It's the distributors that are doing it. So yes, going to call out and use, you know, use those people as an example. I used to blur out faces, but I don't have to do that. Some, sometimes I still will if it's like a super small, you know, create creator. There's certain times where I'm like, okay, I have to blur this person's face. And I do. But then most of the time I don't anymore because per YouTube guidelines, I don't have to. I don't have to. So I'm not going to. I've said multiple times, if you don't want you know, to be subject to constructive feedback, someone roasting you, criticism, anything like that. Don't put your shit on the internet and have it be public. Don't do that. Don't say dumb shit on the internet. By putting something on the internet publicly, you are opening yourself up to people, you know, reacting to your content, you know, reposting it. That's just, I know what happens with me. It's fine. That's part of the job. And you can say all day, well, oh, they're not influencers. 
girl, I know, I know they are not influencers. They might act like they are or try to be. They are salespeople, but they are using social media to market, promote, sell whatever thing they are selling. I just think that's silly to try to use that, that point to try to negate something that someone is saying or, you know, videos that people are making or the fact that your company essentially, in my opinion, is a pyramid scheme. So in conclusion, I am a bully with a broke mindset. No one should listen to me. That's that on that. Please don't join this MLM. Please don't join any MLM, but especially the ones that are offering all these like free thing, not free things, but educational resources and blah, blah, blah. You can get all that shit for free, like on the internet. Like he even admitted it himself. So please don't do that. I'm Like I said, I'm gonna have some great resources linked down below, some other videos on this company itself. Um, a bunch of creators that I like that are commentary to are linked down below. I actually need to add a few more because I've been like binge watching a bunch of other people. I hope you have a great rest of your night, weekend, day, whenever you're watching this. I hope your year is off to a fabulous start. And if it's not, that's okay. It doesn't have to be. You're all right, babe. You'll get through it. Anyways, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.